Welcome to Photo Booth CRM. I hope you're excited. I know we're excited to have you join us. Uh, in this video, I'm going to walk you through the setup wizard. A common complaint people have when signing up for new tools and new software is that it's too complicated, it, there's too many steps involved, there's too many new things to learn. We heard you. So we tried to condense the entire uh, initial setup process into four steps. And that's what we'll be walking through in this video. So let's get started. This is the screen that you first uh, are greeted with when you sign up for a new account. And once you click the button, you're taken to step one, which is just some general business and contact information about you and your company. Your phone number, your email address, your website address, uh, just for informational purposes and, and some emails that get sent out, including some of the contact information about your business on the bottom of the email helps you remain compliant and not go into spam boxes. So that's important. When you fill that in, you just continue to step two. Website integration. Now, don't get intimidated by uh, these codes here. It's very simple. You basically copy this uh, HTML code in the bottom and paste that anywhere on your website that you want people to fill in your form. Now, that could be your home page, your pricing page, your contact us page, wherever you have your customers and leads filling in your form to get more information you paste this code. Um, so here's an example of how it would look on a pricing page, for example. You just paste the codes in there and the form will pop up. Um, go back here. And then you'll see that there are booking page URLs, contract signing page URLs, and payment page URLs. For our purposes, we have the same URL for each step of the process. You can break them out into separate pages. And you basically would copy the same exact code and paste it into the pages. Now, if you head over to our booking page, this is what the form looks like, the code's embedded. It's just as simple as going into your editor and uh, pasting the code in there. And when you pop out, you'll see the form. The thing to note is that this is an advanced super form, so to keep it easy for users, it's the same code that you paste everywhere. However, the form the code knows where in the process the customer is. So if it's on the initial pricing page, it will show the initial form. Even though I go to the booking page here and I see the initial form, if a customer is onto the contract signing portion of the process, they would not see this form. They would see the contract for signature. So that's pretty cool. You don't have to worry about uh, putting different codes into different sections. It's all the same form. The form takes care of it and it knows what process what step in the process the customer's at. Uh, and then we also have a review page URL. If you have uh, any page on your website where you request people to fill out reviews of your, of your services, you just put that URL here. And then after the event, when the customer sent a email requesting a review, there's a button in that email and it will lead them to this page. So looks intimidating, but it's pretty simple. Once you have that done, that's it. You just move on to the step three, which is where you set up your payment information. Now, as of the recording of this video, we are compatible with PayPal, Stripe, and Authorize.net. We hope to add more to that in the future. And it's pretty simple. You input your uh, credentials for each of these processors. If you only use one, you fill in one. You'll see here we only have PayPal. You just put in your email address. If you use multiple, you can fill in multiple of these. The only thing that you'd have to do is check which one you want to set as your default. So you can have PayPal and Stripe, for example, and set PayPal as your default. Um, and once you have that input, you just continue on to step four, which is the final step. This is the section where you add your photo booths and your additional add-on services. So if you look at the photo booth section, you'll see here that we have two booths set up, the enclosed and the open. And you would add booth by clicking the button here, but I'll show you what it looks like with a filled in one. You just type in the booth's name whatever it may be, and you set in your pricing structure. Now you can do it multiple ways. You can just say that two hours is, let's say, $6.99, and fill it in for each hour. Or you can do it up to what we did here, six hours, and then say that every additional hour after that is an additional $100, and the system would calculate that for you automatically. And then you'd also set up how many booths you have of this particular booth type. So we have one enclosed booth. You put one in here. You can also set up a default setup and takedown time. So if it takes you an hour to set up the booth and 45 minutes to take it down, 
you'd input that here. And what happens is that when someone books a booth and it's added to your calendar, it would automatically add the setup and takedown time before and after the event rental. That way you can't book events in your calendar too close to one another. It knows that you need a certain amount of time to set it up and take it down. That's pretty handy. Here you can input a description. This is something that the customer would see when they select their booth type. And then you just have a section for an internal memo, not visible to the customer, just if you have any notes that you want your staff or you to see about the booth. You set it to available or not available. If you ever need to take it down for whatever reason, that's where you do that. And that's it, you save it. And then you'll have whatever booth types set up in here along with the number and their status. You can also put in additional services. So you have a number of examples here. You click the new add-on button to create a new one, but I'll show you an example of one that's filled in. So social media kiosk, let's check that out. It's very simple. You just type in the name of the add-on, the price, the description that is visible to the customer. Again, it's the same thing that there's a memo they don't see in case you want notes and the available or not available status. It's really that easy. Uh, you save that and then that's it. That concludes the last and final step. You just click your finished and it takes you to the next section of the software. Thank you for watching.